Hello everybody and welcome back to Screen Stars and welcome to another of my special triple reviews. Now I thought I would do a triple review on the Crocodile Dundee movies mainly because I watched all three of them around Christmas, certainly the first two because um, Film 4 on in the UK, I think it was Film 4, was showing them. Um, so I re-watched them uh, with my wife and I hadn't seen them for a few years, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed them. Um, and I realised I hadn't seen the third one, Crocodile Dund Dundee in Los Angeles, for a long time as well. So I've just caught up with that one. So I thought I'd give you my thoughts on all three films. Certainly, the first one is an iconic, classic film from the 80s. The second one's a worthy follow-up, I would suggest. And many people certainly disregard the third Crocodile Dundee film, Crocodile Dundee in Los Angeles. But I shall give you my thoughts on that film as well. So... Um, I hope you enjoy this review and of course the first film that we are going to be looking at is Crocodile Dundee. Now this film was released in 1986 and it was a box office smash hit. Now I went to the cinema to see this uh, and I would have been about 13, 14 years old when this came out um, and it was just such an entertaining film to watch and it's a fish out of water story. Paul Hogan who wrote the film as well and produced it plays Crocodile Mick Dundee who um, there is a journalist um, Sue from America who goes over to Australia and she seeks out this story of this um, crocodile man who um, was wounded out in the bush um, and survived and she goes on this trip with Mick Dundee and they slowly but unsurely fall in love as they go across the bush as he takes her across this trip across Australia and it gives many people at the time a chance to see Aus the beauty of Australia for the first time if you like it wasn't um, um, I mean th this film Crocodile Dundee he was regarded as one of the best uh, advertisements for tourism for Australia ever um, so it showed a lot of this beautiful country a lot of this untouched beauty of this country um, along the way we get to know the, the this character Mick Dundee who was written brilliantly um, by Paul Hogan this character um, this complete innocence about him um, and also a very very comedic character so they go on this adventure across Australia and then right at the end of it she invites him back to New York she thinks it will be a perfect way to finish the story and Mick Dundee who might just be falling in love with her agrees so there's a there's two parts to this story there's the part in Australia and then there's a the part when they go over to New York and it's a whole new adventure for Mick it's a role reversal um, whereas Sue had completely no idea what to expect in Australia Mick has no idea what to expect in America and he is a complete fish out of water but he loves it at the same time all these new things to discover um, gets into all sorts of little scrapes um, and their love continues to blossom as the film progresses so an absolutely fantastic film um, easily one of the most memorable from the 1980s um, it's, it's, it's one of those cinema experiences that I remember very very clearly and I don't remember being that excited to go and see it before around but it's one of those that I went to see and just absolutely was buzzing uh, by the end of the film it's it's got a great heart this film there's a great love story at the very core of it it's very very cleverly written um, it's very very funny um, and it's a brilliant take on the fish out of water story um, I think it opened many people's eyes to Australia at the time um, Paul Hogan was absolutely fantastic as Crocodile Dundee he was more known as a, a, a comedy guy in, in America really he had his own like comedy I mean in, in, in Australia he had his own like comedy show and stuff and this just made him an absolute megastar this film certainly in the US um, and worldwide uh, so it's a very very simple and clear 9 out of 10 I almost give it a 10 out of 10 because to be honest I think the only thing that goes against this film now is it's probably it, it, it's dated a little bit and it feels a little bit old fashioned only because now Australia everybody knows all about it what it's all about now um, but it's still a highly entertaining film and really really fun to watch now the second Crocodile Dundee film Crocodile Dundee 2 was released two years later in 1988 
it was another box office hit even though not just as big as the first one and Crocodile Dundee 2 I remember I went to the cinema to see this one as well and I remember being um, for the most part just as entertained as the first one um, and this second one is more of a straight up adventure story I think it's it's, it's fair to say and it, it kind of rule reverses like in the first one it started off in Australia and then they ended up in New York well this time around it, they start in New York which is where they ended in the first one um, and Mick and Sue are together um, and there's like there's another like story running alongside it in a sense of uh, Sue's ex-husband who takes some pictures of a drug lord killing somebody um, and this drug lord doesn't take too kindly to that and he sends these pictures to his ex-wife Sue in New York um, and this drug baron ends up going to New York trying to intercept these pictures kidnaps Sue and then Mick is left with only one choice and that is to try and rescue Sue back from this uh, this drug lord from his uh, big mansion in New York so uh, it starts off with fairly comedic elements in the sense of he's trying to find a job he's fishing in the like <laughs> Uh, just on the shores of New York uh, he's trying to find a job you see him walking around the edge of a skyscraper trying to stop this guy from committing suicide see so it starts off very very comedic and then it gets quite serious when Sue gets kidnapped even though it still maintains its comedic approach at times um, and then Mick really has to show what he can do in the sense of trying to save Sue um, and then the second half of this film um, takes it to Australia because when he gets Sue back from this drug baron he um, there's an immediate attempt on their on on her life so uh, rather than put them into protective custody uh, Mick Dundee suggests he takes her back to Australia where he knows he can protect her and keep her safe so they end up going to Australia um, do a little bit of a whistle stop tour um, and then the drug baron ends up following them to Australia um, and trying to track them down and kill the pair of them. Um, it's it's like I say, it's a more of a straight up adventure story this time round, but it still maintains its heart at the film. Um, and there's great chemistry between uh, Linda Kalowski and Mick Dundee, who by this time were a real life couple. Um, they kind of fell in love on on the set of the first film. Um, so by this point there was ke the chemistry felt very very real between them um, it was a, a really well made film and you got to see more of what Mick, Mick Dundee is capable of in a sense of you know uh, his tracking abilities and um, and all that kind of stuff and it was uh, a f I think a worthy follow up to the first one um, and they, they tweaked it ever so slightly to make it different but it felt familiar at the same time um, so I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. I thought it was an enjoyable sequel, um, and I think it, it did reasonably well at the box office. And even though some critics were overly keen on it at the time, I remember, I think it still stands up pretty well to date. And that leads us to Crocodile Dundee in Los Angeles. Now, this is a bit like the black sheep of the family in many people's eyes. It was released in 2001, so there was a big gap between Crocodile Dundee 2 and this one and it was a box office flop to say the least when you look at those numbers there um, I remember at the time when this was being talked about being made I was intrigued a little bit excited but concerned at the same time and then when it came out it got a bit of a critical mauling um, and essentially this time Mick Dundee the back living in Australia because at the end of Crocodile Dundee 2 they decide to stay in Australia uh, but they end up going to Los Angeles because Sue has follows up on like a story in Los Angeles and essentially there's some corruption on like a film set on a film production company and um, there's it seems it might be being run by criminals uh, so she has to investigate and Mick agrees to help by um, trying to get a job in like the the film crew um, and they end up investigating this um, film companies corruption and things like that uh, and that's the essential core of this story now the, the, there's a few differences here to this one they have a son now um, I'm not sure all he is in the film I think he's about 10 so uh, something like that I think um, so that adds a new element to the film a new dynamic in a sense of he has they have a child now 
um, which adds some new layers um, and there's another guy that it brings with him from Australia um, who you might actually recognize who is actually in Crocodile Dundee 2 as one of the thugs that tries to track down Mick Dundee in Australia he's in it um, and he he is almost like the fish out of water character this time around in the US it was a very unnecessary addition I, w I think certainly um, and there's a few things about this um, that don't make it work it feels if you like the interest in this character in this franchise had dwindled by this point uh, the charm and the innocence of the character clearly dwindled by this point and even though I think um, certainly Paul Hogan tries his best in this one um, I think that glint in his eye um, the charm of the character had certainly d dwindled by this point however I don't think this is anywhere near as bad as some critics at the time and even some people would suggest now it's obviously clearly the worst of the three but there are elements of it that certainly make it watchable there are some fun moments in it and um, there's a nice scene between him and Mike Tyson which is quite interesting and there's a few other moments in it that um, remind you of the charm of the first two but ultimately is it it is a little bit of a letdown this one so I've given it a 6.5 out of 10 um, it's definitely the weakest of the three so that's my thoughts brief thoughts on all three of the Crocodile and D films have you seen all of them um, what are your thoughts on them let me know in the comments and I hope you found this triple review interesting fun and useful so thank you very much for watching everybody